In this video, we're gonna go over how you can make the trending TikTok animation like this. And before we get started, please comment, like, subscribe, notification bell, all that stuff. Now that that's done, let's dive into it. We're gonna go to Google Collab and then the Automatic 1111 one after so you can see both ways to do it. So first things first, you're gonna to want to get a video that you want to pull from. So I have this, this jump scare video that I thought would be perfect for something like this because it definitely gets me every time. So I'm doing this on Windows and what you can do is you can click on this little pencil icon down here and you're gonna just go to save photo from video. Once I click on that, cause this is just the default Windows video player is I can scrub till I find where I want. And I wanna do it right at the point of impact. That's the only frame. So I'm gonna save this photo and we'll just save it to my downloads. So we will just call it baseball jump, bike and spell. And we'll go ahead and save that. It doesn't matter if it's JPEG or PNG. So once we have that, then what we're going to do is I'm going to leave a link for Deform Stable Diffusion here in the description below. But before you do that, so we're going to need this. Then we also need to go to our Google Drive that we're going to use this in and make sure we put that photo that we just took and bring it in here because we're going to pull from this later. All right. The other thing that we're going to want to do is if you want to use the model or the models that are kind of in here as default, you can totally use that. In the trending video you've seen, it's potentially maybe use something this Dungeons and Waifus model. So you can download this and bring it into your Google Drive. Now, if you've used a form before, it's going to have made these folders for you. But if you haven't, go ahead and download it and upload it here and then eventually you're going to have to go into the back end here as I always click on the wrong one and go to models, stem diffusion, and then you're going to put that model in here. It can be save tensors, it can be .ckpd or checkpoint and you can pull from that. I have had people say that they have issues that it doesn't work before otherwise you could also just leave it here and pull from it here. But just in case it doesn't work, that's where you will put those models. Now, we have the Stable Fusion version 0.7. I've never run into any issues with Google Collab or anything like that. The only thing you might need to be wary of is say you run a version and you don't like it and you want to run it again, depending on how many frames, if it's 300, 500, 800 frames, eventually you're going to run out of Google Drive credits and you have to buy more. So if you don't want to do that, just make a new Google Drive and just or Google uh, at Gmail and then you can continue to run it. Otherwise you will have to buy credits. So now what we're going to do here is I want to make sure that we connect our drive to everything. So I'm going to click on play here. And it's going to eventually ask me so we got that, and then we have to set up the environment. And it's going to ask me to connect to my Google Drive, and we want to have that so that that way we know we can connect to our models and the reference image we're gonna use for in an image. Then we have to click on the pad setup. Here we go, now we're gonna connect to our Google Drive. We go ahead and be all good with this. Now that's going to let us see where everything is. So if this comes up, you might need to go back and then you'll need to go to, I believe it's content and then drive my drive. And you'll see this is where the, that JPEG image is, as well as our model. So we're going to grab that model that we put in go to models. Stable Diffusion, and I'm just going to right click and copy path. And right now you can see that it's actually already uploading the protogen model. If you have it set as default, I'm going to go to custom and then I'm going to do custom trip point path here. So if we want to use a custom path, this is where we would put it. Make sure you got to change this. 
Everything else is gonna be fine. So now we're down into the animation. You're gonna click on animation and go to 3D. We're gonna make this just 500. You don't need to be crazy long. You guys will get the gist of it. Replicate is fine. I find that works the best. And then zoom, you might have some numbers in here like 0 0.3, 0 0.4. We're gonna keep it at one because zoom isn't as good as translation Z and it's just, just keep it as is. And then I'm gonna pull on some numbers here that I did some work before. We're gonna play with translation X and I'll make sure to leave these in the description. And basically the best way I can describe how all, all of this is going to work is there's a few different things that these all do. And this is uh, Y. So translation X, it's gonna move this axis. Y moves this, this axis. And Z is gonna be kind of a zooming in and out. Similar to zoom, but there's not as much like weird artifacts and stuff that might show up. Uh, 3D X and 3D Y are, are counterintuitive to these, okay? This is what 3D is normally used for. So 3D X is gonna look up and down like this and 3D Y is gonna look like that, okay? And that 3Z and angle are basically the same. It's going to rotate. The positive numbers, okay, for X is going to go to the right. Negative will go left. Y will go positive up, negative down. Z is going to go positive in, negative out. 3DX is going to go positive up, negative down. And then 3DY, positive right, and then negative left. And then Z is going to work the same as angle. It's going to work to, to the right on positive, negative, or left on negative. So you can see how this is going to kind of play with each other. And it's best to just try stuff and see if you like it and not, and then adjust. The higher the number, the harder it's going to go. And so if you just want it to be a slow increments, don't do as high of a number. And obviously if it goes negative, it's going to go really hard in the other direction. So once we've done that, Generally, I find all of this works really well. You can adjust the strength schedule here if you want it to hit harder and in, as in to change on certain prompts or to, at certain times. But I find that this works totally fine. And now we're gonna go down to our prompts here. And so prompts right here is only for images. And we have our animation prompts that are gonna go in here. So I'm just gonna throw some in just to see what happens. But you can, if you need some prompts, you can go to Sippy Tie where you get the dungeons and waifu one if you want to use that. And you can grab prompts here, right? So this is where you can grab those same prompts and throw them in there. We're just gonna have some fun with it and see what we get. I have done some stuff with astronauts before and those work pretty well for me. And I'm just gonna go ahead and throw them in here. If you want, I'll put them in the description as well. It's important to note here, that's super long, right? Well, there's something that's important to note is if you scroll here, I also have what is a negative prompt, okay? These negative prompts are gonna get rid of all the stuff that we don't want, which is gonna help a lot. So that'll help make it look a lot cleaner. And then we're gonna grab the next one and I'm just gonna cut here and then you'll see them all in here. Now I have put in all my prompts. You'll notice that I only go up to 400 because I set it to 500 frames. So once it hits 400, it'll start to change that and it'll stop at 500, okay? It can be, that can be a little bit confusing sometimes. The other thing is you can tell that I noted, I changed the numbers to change every 100 frames. And what's important here is if you come to the end, you need to make sure that at the end of every prompt, even with the negatives, you have a quote and then a comma, unless you are on the last frame or the last prompt. And then you want to leave the comma out so it knows, hey, this is the last prompt I'm going to do. If you miss a comma somewhere, it, with, it will throw an error, so look out for that. Other than that, you should be good. Now, what's going to happen next is we want to make sure that the size of what we're doing is going to be the correct size. So I know that through a lot of experimentation, that at least for me, 540 by 960 works really well. See, to set it at random, I generally always use Euler Ancestral, but there's lots of different options, but I find that that one works the best for most things that I like. Steps, we'll, we'll put it to 25. 50 is as high as I will ever go, 20 is as low. Scale is the CFG scale, and basically what this means is 
of how much emphasis I want the AI to take on the prompt. Seven is pretty average. I'll generally never go higher than 12 and I will never go below seven. So that's something that you can play with, see if you like it. And then we'll set our batch name to uh, TikTok Trends Tutorial. So I know when to find it in Google Drive later. And now we are going to look at our init settings. So we're going to click on use init. Yes, I want, I always, always use 0.9 for things like this. I have a tutorial where I did something similar. And then I'm going to make sure that if I go to my drive and I look for the image, baseball, jump, copy path, I'm going to go ahead and put that in there so it knows where to pull it from. And after we've done that, that is what we're, that's all we're going to need. So once we have it, then we can just go ahead and run all. I'm just going to go run time, run all. And we're going to continue. And now it's going to run through this thing again, but we should be good to go. And it will start generating our video and I'll cut back to that. So you can see it started to adjust here. And it's always going to start from that in image and then change it slowly over time. The other important thing to do, you will have to do is it says create video from frames right here. So normally this is going to be uh, checked. If you uncheck that, then the Google Drive will automatically make a video for you. In order to find where the video and the images are going to be, you're going to see a folder called AI that will become populated by running Stable Diffusion. Click on Stable Diffusion, the date, my misnamed tutorial, and then all, all of the files and everything are gonna be in here. So first things first, we are going to grab our video that we want to use to transition with. I'm using this baseball jump scare video because I thought it would be great. Then you're gonna click on this little pencil icon, and this is just the default player in Windows. I'm gonna do save from video. And then it's gonna bring this window up and I'm gonna scroll till I find what I want too far. So we check the baseball and right there. So I'm gonna save this photo and we'll call it baseball jump, that's fine. So now I have that photo saved, okay? And I know it's in my downloads folder. Then we're gonna boot up your automatic 11.11 and this is where we're going to be. Now, if you don't have the forum installed by default, you're going to go to extensions available, going to click on load from, and then you'll put into forum and it will show up because I already have it installed. It's not going to show up for me. So once that's done, go ahead and apply and restart the UI. When you go back to the forum. So this is what you'll start with. Now, what we're going to do is I generally will use Euler A and that works great for me, but we're going to set our width here. And because we're doing a vertical video, I find that 540 by 960 works really well. We'll keep our steps on 25. The seed will be random and we'll put our batch name. We'll just call it TikTok trend and call it good. Now we're going to get into the keyframes. We're going to go to 3D and that might take a moment to load up. I find that replicate or wrap work totally fine. We will, we'll put our frames to 500 for this. Cadence is two is fine. Strict schedule 0.65 is totally fine. You can put in some fancy string schedules, but like for what we're doing, I think it works great, but that is up to you. Now we're going to get into the motion here. And again, I'm going to leave the motion stuff on the bottom for what I'm going to throw in here. But for these videos, we can just go ahead and throw in these values and I will explain what all of these will be doing and what's going to be happening. So you get an idea of how you can tweak it in the future. So translation X is going to move positive right, negative left, Y positive up, negative down, Z where it's like zoom, we're going to zoom in positive, zoom out negative. Rotation 3DX is not intuitive because you need to, for positive, it's going to rotate your head up or rotate your head down for negative. 
for 3dy it's going to go to the right you're going to rotate your head to the right rotate to the left for negative and then 3dz is going to change the angle will go to the right or negative to go to the left your field of view it's set standard to 70. we can try that you can also try like 120 if you want a wider angle to play with that's up to you and once we have that then we need to go to our props now with this we have a couple different options i'm just going to use some options that i used before and i'm using the realistic vision model here and i'm going to go ahead and control and paste these now if you'll notice I lost the braces here. You need to make sure you have those braces and make sure I leave that last comma out. If you don't leave that last comma out, you will get an error and it will be confusing because it's going to say we don't have enough frames or the frames are weird. And it's, it's literally just a comma. Make sure you have a comma at the end of everything and you have quotes for all of this. All right, now we need to go to our in image. Now, generally, what I've had to do for this is if I use an init, I have to go to a place like Imgur, for example, to host set image. If I don't, then it doesn't seem to work. So I'm going to go ahead and right click, copy image link, and you can just make a free account on Imgur and keep everything private. That's what I do. And then I'm going to put this in here. Make sure that you have the .png at the end here. If you don't, it will not work, okay? And we'll set our strength to 0.9. That's what I like to use. Feel free to play with this as well. And that should be all that you need for this. So we're gonna run it and I'll cut back to the completed product. And that's going to be it for this video. If you liked it, you know, please again, subscribe, notification bell, comment, all that jazz. If you have any questions, drop them below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.